Hi, I'm Carolyn Helfrich, and today I have the privilege to be in Gary Melcher's studio. Here it is, home Belmont in Fredericksburg. And today we're going to use um, flowers and foliages from his garden to interpret one of his paintings. The painting we've selected is called In Holland. And there's, as you can see, it's quite a large painting. So to do the whole thing would be a little overwhelming. So we're gonna focus on the focal point of the, of the painting, the girl here with the two blue buckets and intersperse different aspects of the painting through it. Interpreting a painting, you wanna look at the whole thing. Um, so the, the ground that the girls are walking on is kind of brown and rustic. So we picked out this container that um, looks like it's kind of like got bark and things like that on it that would represent the soil. Um, not all of your containers that you might want to use for an art interpretation are waterproof. It's not like going and getting a glass cube or a nice ceramic container or something. So you kind of have to, you, so your mechanics, you kind of have to um, work with those a little bit. So I have lined this with just a black trash bag and taped it up. And so this gives me something to protect or, or to hold the water and um, not let it seep out. Because you do, if, if you get the chance to actually work within a museum, you have to be very, very careful here. Um, and then I have wet two pieces of Oasis to give me a, um, a base and something to be able to stick, um, sit, stick the flowers in. So we've got her two buckets and these are two buckets that I just spray painted. There's a little bit of thinking that goes on here. I'm actually gonna do them this way. Um, and I'm using a Lazy Susan when you wanna I'm going to um, have to turn this arrangement back and forth a lot so that you all can see it. And a Lazy Susan just helps that out. So it also helps if you're making a centerpiece or something like that. So we were fortunate enough yesterday to be able to go out in the garden, cut our flowers, be able to condition them overnight. And these blue buckets obviously are representing those buckets. And then the hydrangeas are kind of to pull out that light blue um, interior of the buckets. And um, so that's, that's how we're getting very literal with this. Um, I'm going to try to do the, the yoke. And I've got two old... Um, Pussy willow stems here that will give me a little bit more structure. And then I'm going to do, I have some grapevine to actually make the cross piece. Grapevine down in one of the meadows. Um, the leaves didn't condition that well, so we're just going to pull them off because I think it would actually make it fairly busy um, going across the top anyway. But these will give us something very supple to make our yoke out of. I'm having a hard time cutting off these really wonderful tendrils here. So the, the pussy willow is just to give it a little bit more strength. So you have those nice uprights. We don't have the weight of the water holding them down for me, for us like she does. And then I'm gonna take just some floral wire, little pieces of floral wire. This is just um, spool wire that you can get anywhere. Art interpretation, um, a lot of museums around the country, around the world do it. 
and it's just a nice expression. It's a nice way to draw attention to the different pieces of art. Um, Belmont used to have one. The garden clubs in town would um, get together and um, do nice, do arrangements interpreting. I had the privilege of doing the sermon one time. Um, the fencer is right over there here in his studio and um, I've done that one, that one's. So it's, it's kind of fun, it gives you, um, it really makes you study the painting. It's something that I would, I would um, recommend you try to do um, in, as your gardens, as you're out in your garden, you can pick your favorite paintings, you can pick paintings in your own home. What a, what a cool conversation piece to, um, for a party or something like that to have interpreted. Um, you could go on the website for Gary Melcher's, pick out one of his paintings and do that um, on your own. The Virginia Museum of Fine Arts usually has um, a fine arts and flowers every other year. Um, the next time is slated for 2021. It's usually in October. And you can go on their website also and look at past things. So this is probably the most time consuming, the um, actual structure. I'm gonna have to cut off this wonderful tendril. Her yoke is not nearly this busy, and we want to pay attention to that. And then I'm just going to pull these down a little bit. So we've got a little bit of a structure here that represents her yoke. So now that we have our mechanics all set and kind of like our the, the main focal point kind of with these buckets and all, I'm going to start adding some more flowers. And I'm really going to just concentrate on her dress. Um, I, ha I have to show you this though. This was in the garden. Imagine all these beautiful blooms all the way down. Um, it's um, making me kind of sad that I'm going to cut, that I'm going to pull these off. But in order to, um, you would never be able to get this in the oasis, so we're going to have to do this. The gardens here at Belmont are a real highlight. Mrs. Melchers was a, real, a big gardener and they have um, restored them meticulously to the way that Mrs. Melchers had them. There's been a lot of help from the Garden Club of Virginia as well as um, the donations and monies from Belmont. So I'm trying to get that line, kind of linear, but then at the bottom, we'll soften it up a little bit. Fox, this is foxglove, by the way. I showed, showed, you, showed off the stem, but I don't think I said what it was. Um, it 
it is a great privilege to get to go out in the garden and find all these wonderful treasures. Um, so the, let me, I'll, conditioning is one thing that is important um, when you're doing your flowers. And we cut these last night, as we said, or yesterday, um, yesterday in the morning. It's better to cut in the morning and to leave your flowers overnight. Sometimes they drink better that, more, that way. Hydrangeas, I've got these little hydrangeas in the buckets. Hydrangeas are kind of cool in that, um, just like they start, the first part of their name is hydrate. And so if you, if you have a wilty hydrangea, if you cut it and it's um, um, very wilty or if it's wilted in the vase, it's easy to um, revive them by simply um, um, submerging the entire thing. Put the head and the stem, everything in water. And it will take up water and just be wonderful after that. Might take a couple hours. But it's a good way to um, extend the, the length the lifetime of your hydrangeas. Her jacket's flowing a little bit more on the right side. So um, as I turn this around, you can see that I made it a little bit bigger on that side. A lot of times in arts and flowers, um, when you're being judged, um, I have a tendency to interpret things very literally. Um, and a lot of times you get uh, taken off for being very literal, but um, it's still the way I like to do it. <laughs> I also have the privilege of interpreting the plays at University of Mary Washington. Um, and to take the story of the play and interpret that with flowers and props. And that's always quite fun. So I have her shawl and I'm trying to replicate her dress with this beautiful oak leaf hydrangea. So see how that kind of represents her shawl and her dress and we've got the the yoke we're not going to try to do her head um and then these bachelor buttons i think would be kind of nice to mimic her pattern the pattern of her dress So this kind of gives you the idea of the pattern of her dress coming through. And then all along the ground is um, some little yellow clumps of flowers, yellow, yellows and blues. So we're just gonna actually just to cover up a few more mechanics. I'm gonna put a few more um, oak leaf oak leaf hydrangea leaves in here, and um, they're just so amazing. And even though you're you still want to cover all your mechanics, that's always important. So your mechanics being your, um, your oasis and your tape. And I think even though we have just that kind of dirt color, um, I think this will work out well to just kind of make things a little neater. 
Always cut your stems at an angle and recut them when you're going to, um, after they've been out of the vase. And of course, you're trying to size them as well, but um, always make sure you have fresh cuts on your stems. So with this, we're just kind of, see how we're just kind of picking up those little clumps along the ground. So that landscape effect goes all the way back to her. And I kind of like that pop of yellow in there. It's kind of fun. Okay. So we have that little representation of the little wildflowers that are in front of the two girls there. So I'm going to try to use, this is just a lovely, smells amazing, red rose, and how we've got those red roofs through there. We're just going to try to give a little background here. So that little bit of red just kind of sticking out on each side. This is Solomon's seal. And walking through the garden yesterday, we looked down and we went, oh, those could be windmill blades. So I put together four and we are gonna try to simulate the windmill with these. And then our windmill can be positioned like that. And I think we have it.